Okay, I think we can start. Hi everyone, my name is Linda Grant and I'm an analyst who works on water conservation here with the city of Milpitas. Super excited to hold this webinar tonight. Tonight we're gonna to talk about irrigation equipment upgrades and leak detection. Gonna go through a couple intro slides before we get to the presentation. Uh -huh, one second. Okay, so just a little, I know we're all pretty comfortable with Zoom these days, but just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, all attendees are muted by default. Um, we will be doing most of our Q&A at the end of the presentation, but if anything comes up during, we can um, always bring that up to Frank as well. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the Vasca website. Um, there is two ways that you can um, participate with your Q&A. We ask you to first write your Q&A question in the box. And then at the end of the presentation, you can raise your hand and I'll be able to unmute you so you can ask Frank your question directly. A little bit of background about BOSCA. So BOSCA represents 26 agencies that include cities, water districts, water company, and a university that all purchase water from San Francisco Regional Water System, SFPUC. BOSCA member agencies provide water to 1.8 million people and over 40,000 businesses in Alameda, Santa Clara, and San Mateo counties. BOSCA's goal is high quality supply of water at a fair price. So um, BOSCA's program objectives, outdoor water use represents the single largest untapped opportunity for water conservation. Um, therefore, BOSCA is really focused on how to help uh, BOSCA community members reduce outdoor water use, including these landscape presentations. So a little bit of information um, for how you can save water in Milpitas. So we work with Valley Water on our water conservation programs. Um, some exciting news is Valley Water has recently increased to the landscape rebate program, landscape conversion amount. So this is the rebate for when you turn your grass or turf into water-wise plants and use some of the irrigation equipment that Frank's going to talk about tonight. That is now going to be $3 per square foot of lawn replaced for Milpitas residents starting July 1st. Um, we also work with Valley Water to offer irrigation equipment upgrades, smart controllers, drip irrigation, a lot of technologies that Frank will be talking about. We also offer rainwater capture rebates. So while we are currently in a drought, it's really important to do what we can to try to save water at home. So please check out all of our rebate offerings and learn more at savewatermilpitas.org. Now, if you're not a Milpitas resident, um, you can go and check to see what BOSCA programs that your agency participates in. Um, some programs that BOSCA offers is the Lawn Be Gone program. So this is a similar program to landscape rebate program where you get rebates of $1 to $4 per square foot of lawn replaced. BOSCA also offers $200 rebates for rain barrels. Bosca also has a smart control rebate and installation program through Raccio, um, where residents be able to buy the Raccio controllers for a discounted price. Um, Bosco also has an optional rain garden rebate program, which is new. Um, for more information and to figure out if your agency participates in the Bosca programs, please go to www.bayareaconservation.org. And we, this is, I think, the last webinar of the season. So thank you for joining us. We will be holding more classes in the fall. So stay tuned. You can learn more resources and tips for waterwise gardening at www.bayareagardening.org. So I'm super excited to um introduce our instructor today so frank nicoli has been a gardener for sorry for over okay. 55 years um 
He has a degree in horticulture and studied at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and at the College of San Mateo. He served eight years as the Director of Resource Management for the California Landscape Contractors Association. He is a member and has served for several years on the board for the Association of Professional Landscape Designers. He is currently the Horticulture Director and teaches at Foothill College. He teaches from the perspective of a contractor who has been in the business for 40 plus years with a passion for sustainability and environmental stewardship. We're super excited to have him today to discuss irrigation detection and how to fix your irrigation systems. Take it away, Frank. Thank you. Before you go, Linda, do you think uh, Milpitas will be lowering their water rates anytime soon? We don't have a upcoming rate study right now. <laughs> um, and over the last five or six years, the rates have been going down. Yes? No? I am not sure. Um, I haven't been with Milpitas that long. I know recently we've had to to increase our rates due to um, operations. So does everybody remember the big muscle cars out there back in the 60s and 70s and gas was 30 cents a gallon? You guys remember that? And then all of a sudden there was a gas shortage and these muscle cars started to go away and equipment started to become much more efficient. You were able to buy cars that all of a sudden, miracle of miracles, we went from getting five miles per gallon to getting 45 miles per gallon. Well, that's exactly what's happening in the irrigation industry right now in that uh, we are seeing a change in um, equipment. We're also getting a lot more support from the water agencies because water is the new gold. And if you don't believe me, then look up Warren Buffett and see what Warren is buying these days. He's buying everything water because he knows water is the new gold. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to save uh, money. You think this is all about detecting a leak and upgrading your equipment? No, no, this is about saving you a boatload of money because the irrigation rates are not going down. Menlo Park has raised their rates 84% since 2010. And they're probably going to go up another 20% in the next two years. So water rates are going up. Uh, we all know that. Um, if you've got any money, invest in water. Because that's, uh, that's uh, the new field of, um, of, of uh, investing, investments right now. So first of all, I want to talk about leaks and such. Um, this is a typical valve installation. This is a leak waiting to happen for two reasons. One, the equipment is cheap, 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 cheap. And two, it's above ground. So it will leak. It's not a uh, if thing, it's a when thing. One of the tips that I'm going to give you today is do not buy your equipment at big box. Stay away from big box because their uh, equipment is not commercial grade. You want a commercial grade equipment. Well, it comes down to how many times do you want to install your irrigation system? If you want to install it a bunch of times, then get your stuff at big box. If you don't, then go where the contractors go. You want to go to some of these irrigation houses like Ewing or Horizon or Site One. That's where the contractors get their stuff because they hate comebacks. They want to install a system. They want to get paid and not have to come back and deal with problems. Big box doesn't do that. It's not commercial grade. This stuff um, does degrade by um, UV light. 
unfortunately, and it's just a matter of time before that UV light uh, uh, breaks down this system. This is also a great place for squirrels to uh, sharpen their teeth. And they will get on this and sharpen their teeth and they will cause a hole eventually. And usually the, that hole will cause the irrigation system to stay on. And that will usually happen the day after you go on a month vacation to, I don't know, Burlingame. So you wanna get good material, first of all, and you wanna install it properly. And then you're going to manage your system. It's not a install and forget kind of system. You manage it and use the solstice or the, the yeah, solstice each quarter as your guide. So March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st, you're going to do something with your irrigation system. It's not a set it and forget it kind of deal. So we're gonna talk about some of the set it, set it and forget it kinds of deals in just a minute. The best valves are valves that are below ground. And you want a good valve. $26, no, 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 no. 116, that's more like it. This is what the contractors are installing. $62, 114 for this manifold. Nope, don't do it. Uh, this is a Hunter uh, ICV, 96 bucks. If you could get a valve that shuts off, not turns on, Turning on a valve is the easy part. It's the shutting off of the valve that's the hard part. And the commercial grade valves will do that. When you shut off a valve, it's a matter of water flow. It needs a certain amount of gallons per minute to roll through that valve to shut it off. If you buy a cheapy valve and put it on a drip system, there's not enough water in there to shut it off. It will stick on. And that means you're running gold through your irrigation system. You're watering whatever plants you have with gold. And that's not the goal of, of, of this class. So let's talk about valves. This is a great place for leaks. If you have this type of valve, it will leak at the solenoid. It will leak at these gaskets here because these screws are, are uh, start to loosen up every time the valve comes on. And then debris gets under this cap and um, causes water to spray out everywhere. So your job in March, March 21st of every year is to get in here and clean these valves out. Take this top off. There is a screw top on this. This is called a jar top valve, by the way. And you wanna clean this thing out. Better yet, don't buy this kind of valve. Get a good valve, like this Rainbird valve, um, or get a, a, a really good Hunter uh, valve. This is a Hunter PGV ASV. This is an outstanding valve. It will not only uh, go on, but it'll also shut off, which is exactly what you want in, in a valve. So, Valves will leak. Valves also have a diaphragm in them. Uh, I saw a cutout, here it is. So there's two chambers in these valves. There's a top chamber and a bottom chamber. When the pressure on the top chamber is less than the bottom chamber, the valve goes on. There's a couple of ways that that uh, pressure on the top chamber is relieved. You can uh, activate it with your, with your clock which means this solenoid plunger here um, uh, lifts water from the top chamber flows and the pressure is reduced on the top chamber causing the valve to open. The other way you can do that is with this uh, pressure relief valve. You slightly turn that, water comes out, pressure is relieved on the top of the, uh, the valve, the valve comes on. 
these two can leak. If this is slightly open, water will go through the valve. It may not be enough to pop the uh, sprinkler heads up, but it is enough to get water flow. How do I check that? Well, one of the ways that you can check it is by using a stethoscope. This is an irrigation stethoscope. You put this to your ear and you put this on your valve and you listen to it. If you hear water flow, you've got a leak. It's that simple. You can also check water on various parts of your irrigation system. If in fact you have valves that are in the ground, well, let me finish up with this diaphragm first. So here's the diaphragm that sits right in the center and separates this top chamber from the bottom chamber. So every time the valve comes on, this diaphragm, which is made of a uh, rubber-like material, pops up. And then when the valve goes off, it pops down. Pops up, pops down, pops down, up, down, up, down, up, down, does that 250,000 times or whatever, 150,000. And what it does is develop a wearing part in the center of the diaphragm. If that opens into a hole, the valve sticks on. You want a good valve with a long lasting replaceable diaphragm. That is the key, replaceable diaphragm. Because you can just pop the top off of this thing, put a new diaphragm in there and you're good to go again. Um, so that is another potential leak with this system. Anywhere where you have a screw, you've got a place to leak. And every time the water comes on, this thing vibrates these screws will vibrate open. They don't vibrate closed, they vibrate open. If this top lifts just slightly, then water starts spritzing out here. And when that water spritzes out there, if it's enough to release the pressure on the top chamber, your valve will stick on. It's that simple. So any place there is a screw, you need to make sure that these screws are tight. When you're screwing down a valve top, you don't start with one screw, go to the next screw on the right and go to the next screw on the right of that. Uh -uh. You do it like you adjust the heads on a car. You go from this screw, cross over the top, go to the screw that is exactly opposite it, and then tighten it. Come back to here, tighten this one, go up over the top, tighten the one on the opposite side. So you're tightening this valve cap down in a way that you're equalizing the amount of, how shall I say it, screw down on the entire valve cap. If in fact you tighten this one and then you go to the one on the left and then you go to the one on the left, the other side could be slightly raised. You don't want that. So March 21st, Part of your job is to come in and make sure that these screws are tightened. If in fact you have this little um, type of valve, same thing. You wanna make sure that the screws are tightened. You wanna make sure that this solenoid is seated properly. You take the top off of here and clean that. Um, important that you do these things because you do not wanna water your plants with the new gold, definitely so. If in fact you have one of these in your landscape, and these are called backflow devices. If you put valves in the ground by law, you have to have a backflow device. The water companies get really excited when you contaminate their water supply. Um, they will fine you if it is a bad enough um, um, contamination. So there's a couple of ways that you install these things. By law, they have to be 12 inches above the highest sprinkler system 
that it, uh, and if it's a pop-up, it has to be 12 inches higher than the, than the pop-up out of the ground. If you do something like this, you're creating a potential for a leak. This is PVC. PVC is subject to breakdown from UV. Never, ever, 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 ever have PVC sticking out of the ground without something on it because it will break down. When you're installing these things, it should be either brass or copper. There's a nice copper installation right there. Much, much better than this cheapy PVC system here. If you've got lots of money and you want to water your system with gold, do this. Or do that. Because it will cost you money. Uh, when this thing blows, it will blow water all over uh, everywhere. This is all PVC. This this is going to leak. It's not a not a uh, if. It's a when. So if you're using a backflow devices, then you need to make sure that your backflow device is in good working order. This is the new approved backflow device. Uh, they don't approve the the cities don't approve or the water uh, agencies. It's actually uh, San, uh, San Mateo County Health and Santa Clara uh, Health. They don't approve these anymore. You have to go with a double check valve. These leak. So you need to clean them. And theoretically, you, you are not supposed to clean them. Do people do them? Yeah, people take them apart all the time and they clean them. Theoretically, you have to get a backflow device um, someone who is licensed in the business to, to do these. <coughs> but people do it anyway. Um, so these are backflow devices. And we've talked about valves. It's a great valve. Next thing I wanna talk about is wiper seals. So this is a Hunter pop-up irrigation head. What they're showing you is you wrap your hands around this on the hunter valve or the hunter pop-up. You cannot touch your forefinger and thumb. El Chipo Grande here, you can touch. This is not a great valve or a great pop-up. It's all about this wiper seal. This wiper seal is there to keep the water from doing this and it will do that it was also there to keep the wa water from popping out this center section here this wiper seal goes up and down every time this head comes on and our water has particulate matter in it it's got rust and uh, sand and all types of good things that wear irrigation parts down so you want to make sure that this wiper seal seats uh, you don't want an unexpected water feature in your garden unless you've installed it yourself. So these wiper seals need to be thick. This is a cross section of a wiper seal. You can see how it seats up against this, um, this pop-up. It should be nice and thick. Rainbird and Hunter have the best wiper seals in the business by far and away. Nobody has a better wiper seal than Rainbird or Hunter, look how thick that thing is. It doesn't wear out. It's also made of a special kind of material that keeps it from wearing out. If in fact you have uh, cheap pop-up heads, then you'll need to figure out how to replace the wiper seal. You should probably YouTube that right now because you'll be doing that in, um, in short order. Um, so there's the, the uh, um, a quick summary on leakage. If you have any kind of point of connection, and by point of connection, if it screws into something on your irrigation system, that's considered a point of connection. So if you look at this system here, it's screwed into the valves in two places. 
if in fact this is screwed into this valve too tight and if this is a cheap valve and they did not use Teflon tape, this will leak. Not might, it will. So that's considered a, a, a weak point in the system. Every one of these things where there are threads is a potential for leakage. I can see Teflon tape being used here. There's Teflon tape here, it's white. You put seven rounds of Teflon tape on each of these fittings and they will not leak. Don't use pipe dope. Pipe dope will uh, clog your valves and your valve will stick open. So anywhere where there is a, a, a part that has thread on it, it is a potential for a leak. You also have that same situation on your irrigation pop-ups. You have thread here, you have thread here. You wanna make sure that these seat. You don't necessarily have to use Teflon tape on a lateral line, but you definitely have to use them on a, on a line that's charged. And a line that's charged means that there's water on it all the time. Um, so that's uh, <coughs> um, never do this. So you see these plumber's clamps? These are for plumbers. That's why they call them plumber's clamps. These are not for irrigation people. If they were for irrigation people, they would be called irrigation clamps. These are for plumbers. This compresses the, uh, the, this whatever it is onto a nipple or some type of a, a part. As it compresses, it will leak. It's gonna break loose here and here and here and here. Anywhere where there's a plumber's clamp, it's gonna leak. So don't ever use a plumber clamp on any of your irrigation systems. That's just setting up a problem uh, for failure in the future. Whenever you test your irrigation heads themselves, you wanna make sure that they're putting out a nice, clean spray of water. Nice, clean spray of water. And they should not mist. The whole deal, and this one is misting. See all this water that's misting up top here? A breeze less than five miles per hour will pick this water up and carry it all over the neighborhood. So you are in fact using your gold to water your neighbor's plants and not your own. The problem with this is that the pressure is too high and it's misting. You want a very even uh, flow of water so that it does not mist. The best irrigation head ever made is an MP rotator. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. The MP rotator is made by Hunter Industries. This uh, head is a outstanding head. It is so well made. If I could give you a device that will raise the horsepower and the gas mileage on your car, would you buy it? Absolutely you would. Well, this will raise the horsepower and the gas mileage on your irrigation system. You can change your irrigation nozzles to this MP rotator. When we talk about irrigation nozzles, we talk in terms of precipitation rates. The Rainbird um, precipitation rate for their nozzles is 1.75 gallons per minute they're putting out a lot of water. We have heavy clay soils here. So that 1.75 gallons of water runs off onto your concrete. And all of the years that I've been doing this, I have never seen the concrete grow an inch. And that, by the way, is your gold rolling out onto the concrete. This 
is 0.45 gallons per minute. One quarter. These cost $5.17 a piece. They are way worth it because this is gonna supercharge your irrigation system. They come in a number of configurations, 1,000s, one, 2,000s, um, 3,000s, and 3,500s. Just remember the 1,000 is 10 feet, 2,000 is 20 feet, 3,000 is 30 feet, the 3,500 is 35 feet. So you can get these heads and change all of your nozzles on your irrigation system to a much more efficient um, uh, nozzle. It's really going to supercharge your system. These um, uh, pop up seat and then they begin to spray water and they apply water in a very even, uh, uh, um, fairly good sized droplet. There's a, another shot of it. This is what it should look at like. Everything's nice and even coming out of there. There's no blow by, there's no debris. So in March, what you're going to do is you're gonna uh, pop these off and then you're gonna throw this filter away. Throw it away. Because you can get a bag of these for about 10 bucks. And so why clean it? Just throw it away. Yeah, I know it's damaging to the environment because it's plastic. I get all that. But if your irrigation system clogs and you're, and you're killing plants, that plant is no longer sequestering carbon. It's no longer storing water. It's no longer providing oxygen to the environment. So it's well worth it to replace these um, plastic filters. Um, you want to do them every year, pop your heads and, and or nozzles and clean those filters out. If you don't want to buy them, okay, get in there with a little toothbrush and clean them out. That's all you have to do. Um, the MP rotators are 80% efficient. I'm not making that up. So if you could increase your uh, irrigation system by a factor of 80%, you would do it. You should do it um, because water prices are not going down. Absolutely not going down. These are adjustable. You can get a handy dandy little orange tool to adjust them. Um, uh, and they're great heads. They're, they're the best nozzles on the market by far and away. Uh, they've got everybody else in the market scared to death because they've got a beat. Uh, uh, they're 690 drip depot whatever that is uh, like i say you don't want to go to the big box stores they don't carry this they rely on repeat business um the uh irrigation houses reviewing irrigation horizon and um site one are the places you want to go and, and a little tip here by the way don't go in there when the contractors are in there because the guys behind the counter will ignore you. That you look like a homeowner, smell like a homeowner, and you're probably a homeowner. Um, and it takes more maintenance for a homeowner, and that's fine. Just don't go when the contractors are there. They're there uh, about seven in the morning till about eight thirty. About nine o'clock, they're gone. So get in there about nine nine thirty. There might be some donuts left uh, from the contractors. And you definitely do not want to be there at noon. You want to get there about 1.30. There might be some hot dogs left because the, the, the houses usually have some kind of lunch for the contractors. And you definitely do not want to be there at 3.30, 4 o'clock because the contractors are back in there. So go at a time when the contractors are, are not there and the, and the guys behind the counter will be more than happy to work with you and make sure that you get the right stuff. They're not there to upsell. They don't need to upsell. When I had my company, I was giving these guys $20,000 a month. When I walked into the door, um, they made sure I was happy. So they're not going to try to upsell you. Um, they're, they would rather get my money than your money. Trust me on that one. So get in there and uh, talk to them about the MP rotators. Um, you, can, you can buy them there. Um, very good price. They're not going to try to um, try to uh, 
uh, give you a, a bad price on that. Honestly, these guys, they want to make sure that you're happy. Um, they, uh, they really do. So that kind of takes care of the, the leak detection stuff uh, and potentials for leak. Remember, stethoscope, everyone's got one. This, this will uh, tell you whether your system is leaking. Put it up against your ear, put it on a valve, put it on your backflow device, whatever. If you can hear water flowing, you've got a leak and you need to find it and fix it. Okay, I want to talk about um, uh, equipment. This is a rain click. If in fact you could get a device that will automatically shut your irrigation system off when it starts raining, would you buy it? Yes, you would. And that's what this does. Frank, we don't see your screen right now. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Keep me straight. I always get ahead of myself. So this is a rain click. What it has is this chamber right here with these little vents in it. Water fills this chamber up and there's a ceramic disc in there. As long as there's water on the ceramic disc, your irrigation system is off. You can adjust this opening, by the way, so that your accumulation time uh, in this chamber and your evaporation time uh, is adjustable. <laughs> it does include a uh, gutter bracket, so you can hang it right on the gutters. It's wireless. It works with um, most uh, hunter clocks on the wireless side. If you don't have a hunter irrigation clock, and by the way, hunter makes the absolute best. Nobody can touch them. I wouldn't buy any other product except hunter. And I'll tell you one really good reason why. They answer their phone and they support I have, uh, I ran a company for 40 years and I can tell you the other guys don't answer the phone nor do they uh, report, uh, support you. <clears throat> if you've got a problem, you want to talk to somebody to help solve it, these guys do. So this is a rain click. Um, it works with either wired and you can get a wired one. Here's the wired one. And essentially it is the same as this, except wires. If you do not have a, a Hunter irrigation controller, you can use this rain click and wire it into your system just by uh, wiring it into the ground line. Interrupt the ground line and wire this in. Anytime it rains, it interrupts the uh, flow of current to your solenoids. It automatically um, comes back on once the ceramic disc is dry and you're back in business. The first time it rains, this thing will save you the cost of what, it, what you purchased it for. So there's a significant ROI on this. You can also get a freeze click, but you know we don't have too much of a, a big deal with uh, freeze clicks. If that isn't what you want, then you can get a mini weather station. Isn't this cool? This is the all-in-one wind, rain, and freeze sensor. So this is a pretty cool deal. If the wind is too high, the problem with wind being too high is that your irrigation um, uh, uh, pop-ups begin to mist and watering your neighbor again. You don't want to do that. This automatically uh, uh, set, you can set your wind accumulation speed on this from 12 to 35 miles an hour. I suggest if you've got misting issues with your irrigation system, you set it on the low side. If you, you're running some uh, pretty good uh, nozzles, 
then you can set it on the high side. It automatically uh, shuts your irrigation system down if the wind becomes too high. It automatically shuts your irrigation system down if we get rain rainfall totals from one eighth of an inch to three quarters of an inch. You set that up. It automatically shuts down the system if temperatures get be below 37 degrees. <clears throat> so this is well worth it. Return of, uh, in of investment on this is two rainstorms. Two rainstorms. If it shuts it down twice, you're getting your money back. So this is a great product. It works with uh, a number of the Hunter uh, irrigation um, controllers. I want to talk a bit about controllers and talk about uh, a couple of them uh, in particular. Uh, first one I want to talk about is the node. So the node is a battery operated controller. Instead of running wires, <coughs> or if you don't have, oh, where'd it go? I want to go back to node. There we go. If you don't have wires at a certain area and you want to add irrigation systems, you can put a node in. This is battery operated. One, two, four, and six stations <coughs> is what it'll operate. This is an outstanding controller. Once a year in March, you're going to change the batteries on this thing. You're also going to check this valve to make sure it's not leaking. So this is their uh, answer to a um, battery operated controller. Um, believe me, I've used them all and uh, Hunter makes the best one. It has a, a gasket in here that seals the electronics. Water and, and electricity don't mix very well. So this is pretty well sealed. The other controller I wanna talk about is the Pro-C. <clears throat> so this is Hunter's Pro C, 6, 12, and then anywhere from 4 to 32 stations. You can get it fixed at 6 or fixed at 12, or you can get it modular 4 to 32. This is an outstanding controller for residential irrigation control. You can stick uh, sensors on this thing all day long. You can put a rain click on it, wireless, of course, because it's all set up for it. Um, this is one of those um, controllers that will supercharge your system. Average savings, if you uh, program this thing correctly, is about 25% of your current water use. Um, you need to program it correctly, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, but this is an outstanding controller. I like this controller for a number of reasons. Um, there, um, it has um, cycle and soak, which means that you can uh, have this system come on for five minutes, shut off for an hour, come on for five minutes more, shut off for an hour and then come on for five minutes more to water whatever you have on that slope. If you're watering on a slope, it doesn't take very long for that water to begin running off. You want the water to soak in, come back on, apply a little more water, soak in, come back on and apply water a third time to finally finish the irrigation cycle for a certain hydrozone. This system will do that. It has three independent irrigation programs, which means that you have three irrigation clocks inside of this. If you've got lawn, I hopefully you're going to be taking that out, but let's just say you've got um, shrubs, California natives and veggie garden. Each one of those is an independent irrigation program. You can do four start times on each, which means that this controller will, will have 12 start times in total. Outstanding controller. It works with SolarSync. I haven't talked about that yet. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. 
and it'll work with the click sensors. <clears throat> and by the way, Hunter doesn't pay me to do this. Uh, I have a great relationship with these people because they helped me make a lot of money over the years. They supported me when I was a contractor. And so I support them uh, now that I'm a program director. Um, you know, you want to know about a good product, and I'm telling you about a great product. So this is the Hunter Pro C. Um, it's an outstanding um, uh, system. Uh, you can come over here to the models and see the, the different models that they have. Uh, four station, six station, 12 station, and then you can, you can uh, get modules. Um, easy to install. Um, here's the plug-in modules uh, that you can get. Um, it works with all of these sensors, solar sink sensor, rain click, mini click, wind click, soil click, wireless solar sink, wireless rain click, wireless freeze click, and a flow control, if you wanna put a flow control on, on that. So this is solar sink. And solar sync, let me find the sensors. I think it's under accessories, if I remember. Nope, it's not. Oh, there we go, sensors. This is a great addition to your irrigation system. This is a solar sink. So what happens with this? This is a uh, sensor that automatically adjusts your run times daily based on local climate conditions. So you can have this in your own backyard. It attaches to your gutter. It's your own weather station for your controller. Every night at eight o'clock, it does a data dump to your controller and it changes the time up and down. So let's just say that it's February and all of a sudden it gets 80 degrees. And that does happen around here. This thing automatically registers that, data dumps to the controller and says, my goodness, it was hot today, increases the time. If you're on a business trip, or you happen to be in Hawaii or some place else, this will automatically adjust your irrigation system. Return of investment, about two weeks, to uh, in, considering the prices of water today and the prices of, uh, of uh, plant material too. It'll save your plants every time. So the solar sink works with the Pro-C uh, controller. The controller on the inside of the, the Pro-C has all the electronics that, uh, that uh, talks with this unit and it will help manage your irrigation system. Remember, you are the primary manager of your irrigation system, but these guys will help you in a big way, um, especially when you're uh, really busy and we're all busy these days, I, I know I am. So the Pro C with that sensor. Now I'm going to talk to you about a, another sensor. And this is the soil click sensor. And the soil click is a sensor that you bury in the ground. Okay, here's the problem with that. The depth at which you bury that soil sensor is going to be where it collects its data. If you've got trees and ground cover in that same system, where do you bury that thing? I'm telling you not to buy one of these things until they get the technology done on this. In my opinion, these soil sensors are still in beta. And while the, the concept is a great concept, they're not quite there yet. <coughs> if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have this set of ground cover, it's going to water the ground cover. By the way, this is the little dealie that goes in the ground. Oh, I don't want to watch that movie. Well, okay. So here's the sensor. It goes in the ground. 
um, next to the, uh, at whatever depth you set it at. I wanna find that sensor again. Probably never will, but anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm saying don't buy a soil sensor just yet until they got there, um, they get uh, these things uh, worked out. So if you look under all of these sensors, there's a bunch of them. Pick the one that you feel is the best <coughs> for your system. You can get a flow meter for your system. It has a cable. It runs to your controller and will tell you exactly how much water each zone waters so that you can dial your zones in to perfection. This is a, uh, a system that works quite well. Uh, return of investment, probably six months uh, to recover your dollars on this. It has high and low flow alerts. It has leak detection, which means that if there is a broken irrigation head, this thing will sense it and shut down that hydrozone automatically. Um, it has total water use reporting and it will report water use per zone. Um, it um, also learns and we'll talk about that in, uh, in just a minute. Um, this is a very good product. Uh, it's very easy to install um, and it's well worth the price. When we talk about it learning, if you running um, uh, your system, let's say valve number one at a certain uh, uh, time, this thing will understand what the flow rate is. And if your flow rate has increased, it'll tell you. In fact, if it's increased to a certain point, it'll shut off that hydrozone <coughs> so that it doesn't water. Um, well worth the price. Do I have one at my house? Oh yeah, are you kidding me? Yes, of course I do. Um, it uh, works, works quite, quite well uh, with uh, these systems. Um, so that's a sensor that I would definitely get. Wind click, um, not so much. Um, I don't have a wind click at my house. Um, I have a different system and I'm gonna show you my system in just a minute. Uh, so I don't think I would get um, the, um, the wind uh, sensor. Freeze click, not really. When's the last time it really froze around here? I mean, we have a freeze event, what, about every five or six or seven years. You know when it's gonna go freeze. And so you can get out there and shut your system down. Um, not, not that difficult to do, to do that. Mm. Um, so these are a lot of the sensors. And by the way, I wanna make sure that you understand when you go to the Hunter site, they have a video library that is the best. There's 153 videos on field knowledge. Counterbuzz, what's going on out there? Product guide, 49 videos, site studies, five, specialty stuff, 31, training webinars, 19. So if you're serious about your irrigation system and serious about keeping the gold in your pocket, um, come to uh, this Hunter site and check out their videos. They're really well done. Here's one on the Hunter Pro adjustable spray waters. Uh, here's one on the MP rotators and the water savings. <coughs> you can um, watch these videos free. They're there. Uh, 293 total videos is what Hunter has in this library. It's too bad you didn't start watching these at the beginning of this pandemic because you'd be about done right now binge watching all of these videos. Uh, and they're very well done. They're professionally shot, um, really, uh, really uh, quite, uh, quite well done. 
Um, Hunter also has an uh, industry factory tour. Uh, they are uh, based in um, San Diego area. I've done the factory tour and it is fascinating. Um, if you're ever down in that area and you want to do something that's really off the wall, um, do the factory tour. Um, the robots in there are amazing and the products that they're making are just uh, amazing. They have a water testing facility in there too, where they test everything that they make. They'll show you that on the tour and you'll get to watch them uh, test product. Fascinating stuff. But you know, I'm in the industry and I, I, I'm kind of geeky that way. But you know, if you want to try something a little off the wall, uh, you might want to try it. So I want to kind of backtrack before I get into my next subject. Don't do this. This is a problem waiting to happen. You definitely want to do this. You want to put the valves in the ground. They're protected. Squirrels can't get at them. Nothing could get at them. They're going to last significantly longer than if the valves are um, uh, sticking up in the air. Uh, we call those targets because they are definitely targets. By the way, you cannot bury these. These have to be 12 inches higher than the highest irrigation head. Um, so you can't put these in the ground. I see this gentleman has a sawzall. He's gonna cut this sucker off. Uh, hopefully he doesn't replace it with the same garbage he has on there. The reason he's replacing it is because it's garbage. Um, I wanna go back to the valve and just reiterate the leak points, it's going to leak at this seam. It's going to leak if these screws are um, slightly torqued. It's going to leak under this solenoid. There's an O-ring in there. If you've got a cheap valve, that O-ring breaks down rather quickly. <coughs> it's going to leak here. Remember, March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st, you go out and you check your irrigation system. <clears throat> By check your irrigation system, I mean you turn on every valve and you see what it's doing. You look at every valve while it's on to see what it's doing. You want to make sure that you tighten down these screws. If, in fact, it's the end of summer, this valve has probably been on 40 times. That's enough to loosen these screws. So you want to get in there and tighten those screws. <clears throat> really important. Like I said, don't do this. You can replace all these solenoids on the commercial valves. Um, it's about a $19 piece of equipment, but these are going to give you long life. Uh, I've had my system installed since 1991, and I've replaced one solenoid since 1991. I'm going on, uh, what, 20 plus years? What year is this? I don't even know. Uh, 21, uh, 20 years. I've had that system in the ground 20 years. And I've only replaced one solenoid, and I have uh, 13 valves uh, on my property. If, in fact, you have drip systems, I want to talk about that. These have the potential to leak. These are your filters. In fact, I'm going to pull up a, a bigger version of these. and give you a quick rundown on the types of filters you should get. So this is an API filter. This is a commercial grade filter. It has 121 micron mesh uh, or 150 uh, micron mesh filter on the inside of this. And it is commercial grade. It will not clog. If you buy these at big box, you get a tiny little um, filter that will clog. And I'm looking for one right now and I don't see one. Oh, here it is. Mr. Landscaper. This is the Mr. Landscaper guaranteed to clog filter. You want some heft. You want that. You want that on your system. You want this on your system. You don't want Mr. Landscaper in there. 
Unless you want to be out there every month cleaning your filters. If you want to do it every month, outstanding. Get Mr. Landscaper. Your time is, is, uh, is your money. <clears throat> so these uh, are also have a potential to leak. You want to check the threads, make sure they're not leaking. <clears throat> check this uh, top piece here, make sure it's not leaking. <clears throat> check your system. Here is the um, filter that you get on the commercial grade. This is a 120 micron mess. Will this clog? Not really. Will it fill up with particulate matter? Yeah, it will. But this keeps your drip system from, um, from clogging. <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you the best drip system in the world. And it is the Netafim system. The Netafim system um, has, and you want to make sure it's Netafim. This is how you spell it. Uh, Netafim was developed to do this. It grows miles and miles and miles and miles of crop. And they get real excited when their system does not work. So the Netafim system is the best uh, system out there. It's easy to operate. It's easy to install. I'll show you a couple of configurations while I have you trapped. Um, so you can um, get uh, Netafim. This is for orchards. Um, they do have a homeowner. Um, one, and I don't see it right off the top. Here it is, landscape. So the Netafim system, this, this is their emitter, their inline emitters. You don't need the cupron copper emitter, you don't. But what happens with this is they have these fins on the uh, system um, uh, that spin the water before it comes out. And once it spins the water, it spins the soil away from uh, getting uh, clogged and it goes down to the end of the line and you pull the um, end cap off and clean it out. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do drip irrigation. Um, homeowner side on veggie gardens, absolutely. Greenhouses, yep, you can do that. Um, lots of information on this website. The types of um, line that you want to get is called TechLine CV. And you want to get half inch. Don't get the quarter inch because it does clog. TechLine CV, laser etched. Uh, lead approved, UV resistant tubing, which is something that you really need. You can get it in uh, emitter rates from 0.26 to 0.9 gallons per hour. If you're on heavy clay soils, 0.26 or 0.4. If you're on uh, sandy soils, 0.9 gallons per hour. Emitter spacing, 12, 18, and 24 inches. If you're doing fruit trees, you want to uh, put about three line, three rolls around of 18 inch. If you're doing a veggie garden, 12 inch. If you're doing ground covers, you're going to be using 12 inch. Um, so this comes in uh, a number of different configurations. Um, there is a product sheet that uh, tells you everything that you ever wanted to know about this thing on their um, on their tear sheet comes in rolls of 100 feet or 500 feet or 1,000 feet or 10,000 feet. <clears throat> so here's the, well, yeah. 
they don't have the 10,000, that's for commercial, but 100, 250, 500, and 1,000. Um, they do recommend a filter on this. They want a 120 mesh, easy peasy. You can buy it uh, when you're down there. Great system. It tells you exactly how to install it. Here we go, clay soils, 0.26. Coarse soils or sandy soils, 0.9 or 0.6. Loamy soil, 0.4. Real simple. You want to water with science on your side. Um, and then it talks about various other things regarding the pipe. So this is the best drip system made. Um, it will increase your water savings anywhere from 39 to 80%. Those are big numbers. Those Frank, are we, have, numbers. Oh, we have a question about this system. Lisa says that gophers bid her metaphem. And what do you suggest to do about that? Gophers eat your plants. They don't eat drip line. Mm -mm. They, they don't want your drip line. I've never had a gopher problem ever with my with drip systems. Uh, I, I put drip systems all over. I have a, 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 a two thirds acre garden up at Foothill College. It's all on drip and I have gophers. They've never touched it. <coughs> okay. Now I'm gonna show you my system. I have a Hunter Hydrowise irrigation system. This is my controller. This is the best controller ever made by far and away. Um, I have it here and I have it up at Foothill College. Uh, here's my Foothill controller. I can sit in front of my computer and manage this controller. It's offline at the moment for some reason. <clears throat> I can walk around the garden with my phone and I can turn on my system. So March 21st, I'm out there with my phone. I'm turning on the patio. I'm turning on the front curb. I'm turning on the front of the house, all off my phone. I can set up my zones and schedules. This is my veggie garden. It happens to be out in my front patio. It tells me everything I need to know about my system. It came on this morning, it watered for 35 minutes. And um, by the way, before I get too far, the HydroWise system has all of the sensors built in. It's taking data from a weather station that is a quarter mile from my house and adjusting my clock according to that weather system. It rains, shuts my clock down. If the winds are high, shuts my clock down uh, because I have my water triggers set. If the wind hits 27 miles per hour and that station senses it, shuts my system down. <coughs> if the, the chance of rain is 80%, shuts my system down. If it's above, um, if the um, temperature hits 80, then it's gonna water 30% more. If it is below 70, 30% less. I set these up. I can set it up to whatever I want. I just happen to have this at 70 or thereabouts. If today's forecast is uh, less than 68, it does not water. I can do cycle and soak. So on this station, I have cycle and soak enabled. It came on for four minutes, shut down 14 minutes, and then 14 minutes. So it watered three times this morning, 14, 14, and four for a total of 32 minutes on this one zone that is in my front garden. This one also is cycle and, and so it also is doing predictive watering, which means that it is um, coming off the weather station. This one's doing predictive watering. This one here is doing cycle and soak because I have a slight, a slight soak. This one is not cycle and soak because it's flat. Rear patio. <clears throat> it is predictive watering. Veggie garden. 
um, in the, my, I have a 58 foot uh, garden, uh, 58 feet by uh, one foot wide. That's my veggie garden. And then I have drip system on uh, one street. <coughs> I can get reports. Here's my weather report. So today, uh, the winds were at 21 miles per hour. The temperature hit 50 to 64 degrees at its top. And here's the water uh, station temperatures. Here's the rainfall, nothing today. Here's your station wind gusts. So today it was windy. Uh, it says that uh, uh, it, it hit uh, 21 miles an hour. Oh no, 13 miles an hour today. But it, uh, uh, from what I understand, peaked a little higher than that. It tells me what my water usage is. It also does diagnostics. I have a solenoid that's going out. So the second solenoid in 20 years is going out. I noticed this a couple of days ago. I've just been too busy. I'm teaching seven classes at Foothill right now, so I don't have time to deal with this thing. It's not burned out yet, but it's getting close. So I got to get out there in a week or so <coughs> and fix this thing. Historical weather. It tells me historical weather. Tells me monthly uh, temperatures and rainfall all through the year. So we're here. Max temp 71 degrees, min temp in June 58, uh, 47 min, 60 in January. So this clock does everything for me. And that's why I highly recommend that you get the Hunter HydroWise. Don't spend money on a cheapie. It is all about keeping the gold in your pocket. And all of these system upgrades will help you do that. That clock might cost you 200 bucks, and it will. Uh, but you heard Linda. She is not lowering your water bill rate. Nope. They're going to do rate increases. Water companies do not lower water bills. They never have. And I've been in the business since 1977 and doing water since 1993. So trust me when I say that they are definitely not going to lower your water bill. Anybody have any questions, concerns, problems, issues? Feel free to type your question into the box or raise your hand and we can unmute you. I did want to share one last resource. Oh, we have a raised hand. Okay, one second. Let me. Okay, you should be allowed to talk now. Yes, I have got a, a drip irrigation where um, it's not dripping. Uh, when when we start the this uh, the timer, the water flows like it's flowing. So how can I? What should I change that it, it drips water uh, and does not flow like, you know? It, there's two things that uh, will probably cause that. There is a poppet valve in there that just needs to be cleaned out. So on the front part of the valve, <coughs> you might have a screw piece. You just unscrew that piece and you'll see a rubber diaphragm looking thing in there. Take a picture of how it looks so you put it back exactly the same way and just get in there and clean it out with a toothbrush. That's probably what your problem is. That valve, uh, that poppet valve is not seating correctly. Okay. Yeah, and, and by the way, if anybody has any further questions and after this seminar, you can email me. I answer all my emails. Uh, I'll put my email in the, can I do it? What, what do I, uh, I can. We can make sure it's included in the follow-up email, Frank. Okay, perfect, yeah. Yeah, you can just put my, put it in there and I'll, I answer all my emails. Uh, so please, um, please um, email me. Uh, this question is a- question on 
trying to find someone who will know how to do good irrigation work, like hiring someone. Yep, yep. Go to the California Landscape Contractors Association website. It's www.clca.org. And then you can do a contractor search and you're going to get professionals. You also can find EPA water sense certified water managers on there and they will help you uh, manage water. I'm an EPA water sense certified water manager. This is a great slide. Uh, those of you who have your phones out, take a picture of this slide. They're giving you money. You wanna take advantage of that. They're gonna give you 25 cents per square foot for drip. High efficiency nozzles, they give you up to five bucks. That Hunter uh, nozzle is $5.17 wholesale. <coughs> They're going to give you five bucks, which means it's going to cost you 17 cents. That's a great deal any, any day. Rain sensors, up to 50 bucks. Outstanding. Landscape meters, flow sensors, and hydrometers, 1,000 bucks. Weather-based ir irrigation controllers, one to 12 stations, 300 bucks. You could get a hydroized. Yep, it could. So there you go. One note, I would just say with the Valley Water Irrigation Equipment Rebate, make sure that you fill out your application before you buy any materials. Yep, good point, thank you. So we have, for Alameda County, um, you'll have to check to see who your water provider. I know Bosca is starting up a upgrade, irrigation upgrade rebate program. Um, but yes, you'll have to check your, your water provider. I'm not sure if you're Alameda County Water District or, um, but you can also go to the Bosca website and see what rebates they offer you as well. But yeah, anyone in Santa Clara County, um, this rebate is applicable. Any other questions we got for you here? San Mateo County, you'd also have to check with your with your water provider. Um, yeah, like San, you, San oh, Mateo Frank, County is definitely offering water rebates and they've just gone up. Any other questions for Frank while we have a great expert here? Looks like you and I are done, Linda. <laughs> oh, we got, let's see, any other, we got people saying thank you. Oh, we have a question. We sure. have primarily native shrubs and flowers and prefer infrequent deep watering with sprinklers. We are interested in the hunter. What do you suggest? Uh, the hunter um, MP rotator works very well with uh, natives. Uh, it applies the water low and slow. It allows that water to, uh, uh, to um, soak into the uh, soil, which is exactly what your natives want. Um, uh, so the hunter uh, nozzles are outstanding. Um, I, I would highly recommend them. The, the whole trick with natives is they don't want too much water. It's, uh, it's the exact, they want a certain amount of water and no more. <clears throat> because you have to worry about the uh, root system rotting out uh, with natives. If you're applying less water, lower precipitation rate, less of a chance that that's happening. If you do get the hunter heads, you will increase the time on your controller. But the long-term savings is significant with, with those kinds of heads. So, yeah. Are we off yet, Linda? Um, I see that we have Sean with his hand raised. So I'm gonna okay. allow you to talk, Sean. Yes, hello, thank you for the presentation. It was really great. Um, thank you. So I, I, my question is, is I had a contractor a long time ago add to an underground PVC um, pipe, a galvanized pipe. Yeah, uh, to to sunlight with a with a you know with a valve for a hose connection, and my question is 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 that um, long term stable? Should I replace that? 
I wouldn't replace it. Uh, Galvanize is for pretty tough stuff. Um, the only uh, concern I would have with Galvanize is it should not be anywhere. It should not be connected to a copper line. As long as it's isolated from that copper line, the problem with uh, it with copper is two dissimilar metals and you'll have um, electrolysis will cause that um, galvanized line to clog up. But you should be okay on it. I wouldn't do anything with it. Okay. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Great. Any other questions? Give it one or two more minutes. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for attending any of our other Bosco classes. Please look out for more in the fall. And also, please do whatever. Um, you know, we're all trying to save water right now. So please go to um, our website to learn more tips and tricks of how we can all reduce our water use. I don't see any other questions. So thank you again for joining. Thanks for staying a little late, everyone. Thank you, Frank. Have a good night. Bye-bye.